In this video, we are going to install the Electric XP 3.0 Hydraulic Upgrade Kit. Let's get into it. Before we get started, it's likely you already own Electric XP 3.0, but if you don't, or you plan to make another purchase, why not use our affiliate links down in the description? It's a free and easy way to help support the channel. With that, let's crack this box open and make these brakes significantly better. Yeah, so before we jump into that though, I just wanna talk about this box. So Electric, when they said they were doing a hydraulic disc brake upgrade, I did not expect it to come with uh, a wheel for one. Um, so that's very interesting. It's really kind of shows they thought of everything. You're getting an entire new tire, new tube, levers, calipers, everything. Uh, I can't wait to get this installed. So JT, why did they give us a whole wheel? So the reason they had to change the wheel is that on the standard mechanical disc brakes, you don't need the right amount of clearance for the caliper. So when you throw on hydraulic disc brakes, you actually end up running into the spokes. So they had to send an entire new wheel so you didn't have to play with any sort of spacing. Really makes the end install that much simpler. You throw on the new wheel, throw on the caliper, dial it in, and you're good to go. It's a very simple task that you may or may not need to take into a bike shop. I have seen quite a few stuff on the Facebook page about people getting these kits and installing them. And a lot of people have two of these bikes and they're saying the first one will take a little bit longer. And then the second one, they're like, oh, it was done in 45 minutes. So Electric made it that much simpler by just sending the front wheel for the end user. Let's look at the time, see how long it takes us. All right, let's do it. It is currently 11.05 now. Also, everything takes longer when you're filming. So give us a little bit of leeway on that. So, and we have a stand, so that makes it, maybe we'll take off five minutes for the stand. Starting out, we have these electric branded bags here. So inside these bags, I believe, yeah. oh, Ryan's got the knife. Oh, yeah, you got a nice little tear there. So here's a look at the lever. This is wrapped up in here and we have our caliper as well as you have your bracket in here for mounting. Now this one with the longer line is going to be the rear lever and caliper. And if you notice, they are together. So these come pre-bled. So be careful by you don't pull the lever until this is mounted to the wheel. So you don't accidentally overextend the pistons. There is a nice bleed block in there uh, to stop that from happening. But these are pre-bled, so you don't have to do any bleeding of your own. You simply root the caliper on the external part of the frame all the way back, and you are good to go. Now on this channel, we like to dive a little bit deeper, and in our full upgraded Electric XP 3.0 video, I called out that all of these cables are external, and this is really showcasing how easy this bike is to maintain because we're just gonna run these wires externally. No need to fish wires through and trust me, that can lead to a lot of frustration. Yeah, uh, two other quick things to know. The most frustrating part about installing these is going to be getting this wire wrap back on. I'm calling that out ahead of time. And then the other thing, uh, inside of these little bags, inside these bags are these little bags with your bolts. Don't accidentally throw those away. These are nice new bolts that have Loctite on them, which you will want to attach those brackets to the frame. And then inside of the box is another box, which has the new wheel complete with tire, tube, and rotor pre-installed. Now, this does come deflated, so make sure that you inflate this before riding. All right, and that is pretty much everything. So we're gonna list the tools that you need on the screen now. It should be a very basic Allen set and a nut here to adjust this front axle. But other than that, it should just be some basic tools. We have a couple tools that we like and recommend here. Always recommend a torque wrench as well. While we're going through this install, we'll also put the torque specs for the various brackets and things like that on the screen that you may need to know at the time of install. A couple tools that we like to use frequently. This is the Pro Bike Tool. This is their ratchet wrench. We also really like the one from Top Peak. Mm -hmm. And we are going to be torquing everything down to spec. This is the nice set from Pro Bike Tool. We can also opt for the more affordable version which has the torque listed at the top. Again, links down in the description if you wanna have a nice full tool set. All right, starting out, we're gonna start out up here in the cockpit. I did already pull out the bar in so that you could see them. You do need to, if you get behind them and pull, they will come out nicely. They have these kind of teeth that grab. Um, sometimes these will break off if you don't get them out nicely, but there are two of them. I pulled them out from both ends. And then you take the grip off, which I have the right side shorter grip off here, and they just simply slide off. What I found the easiest way to work them off. If you can spray air in there, you can, or maybe some water. But the best way we found is just kind of grab it and use the ergonomic pad to just kind of twist it off little by little while pulling out. This is probably the hardest part as you need to pull the grips off to be able to get the mechanical disc brake levers off. 
And right now I am loosening up the right lever or the rear brake, as well as the throttle using the ratchet wrench. Yeah, everything has a like a small Allen key that will be needed to loosen it to slide it off. <clears throat> I do have to say my least favorite part of any bike is getting off the uh, the rubber mounted grips. I do prefer locking brake, uh, locking grips for this very reason. You simply loosen the Allen keys and they slide right off. But and I'm going to start taking some of this cable wrap off while JT is struggling. Uh, if you uh, did ever want to upgrade to locking uh, grips, now would be the time as you will already have these grips off. You don't have to fight uh, getting them back on. It can sometimes be just as much of a challenge as getting them off. We'll put our favorite grips down in the description. Really worth the upgrade. Oh, there we go. Oh, I win. We're racing against the clock here. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot we were being timed here. Let's see what we can do. And we're getting about down here, finishing off taking the cable wrapping. Yeah, it? Like I said, besides the grips, that's gonna be the, I think the second hardest part there. Just just because it's about tedious, trying to make it look clean. But also the most satisfying when you're done. When you're done, it's, yeah. I'm going to take off the throttle. One thing to make sure is that you don't lose this part. This actually goes in the throttle. So make sure you maybe set that aside for when you put it back. Yeah, don't start sliding your grip on without putting that on. What it actually causes is it causes bind on the inside of the throttle. So this little plastic grommet or bushing will stop that from happening. Very important part, but it doesn't look it. So now that I've got this whole side off, the only wire you actually have to unplug because you don't have to undo the throttle is actually gonna be this little Juliet connector. You unplug it. If you notice it is, the pins are very tiny. It's a two pin. This is your motor cutoff. The hydraulic disc brakes that electric sends do also have motor cutoffs. You will need to make sure that that is unplugged when you remove the lever. And also note that there is one on each side. It does not matter which side you plug them into. Motor cutoffs are kind of wired in as a motor cutoff, not right motor cutoff, left motor cutoff, not as important. So now that we have the brake removed, Maybe we can take out that front wheel. So these nuts here on the side, it is bolted right and left. These are 15s. So I'm just gonna put my wrench on there. Give this a little twist. There is also a little torque arm there that kind of holds the wheel up. So you don't have to worry about it as soon as you loosen both nuts, the wheel falling off. And I'm, I'm going to start taking off the mount for the mechanical disc brake. Again, with the ratchet wrench makes quick work of this. Now be careful on some of these bolts as they are pretty tight. If you have a ball end Allen wrench, try not to use the ball end. I found that those, you can either eat a snap the ball end off, or you can actually um, run into problems where you can strip the bolt as, cause the ball end doesn't give you hundred percent engagement like a normal socket. Giving the front wheel a little shake to free up those torque arms. And there we go, the wheel comes out. And that is, this wheel can be set to the side. You do have an extra rotor here. It is always recommended to replace pads and rotors at the same time. But if for some reason you have a damaged rotor, this is a great spare part for you. All right, and then once you've got that other wheel off, you notice here, this here's a better look at, they, I called them torque arms before, I don't believe that's what they are. They just kind of help hold the wheel on. They've got little hooks. You wanna make sure those are out as wide as possible. Those are gonna go on the outside here and you will put the wheel up. And then once you have it up, you will get those lined up and there's little holes in the bottom of the fork that'll actually hold the wheel up and in place. So I've got those on there and I'm just gonna take my 15 and snug these. I'm just gonna get them snug right now. And then when we get the bike back on the ground, when we pump up the tire, I will actually put a little bit of torque on those and we will get a torque wrench and torque those in place as well. And here we have a look at the front caliper and lever. It, like I said, pre-run, make sure you have the shorter of the two hoses. Simply slide it on, make sure your bolt is loose. And you're just gonna slide that down roughly into place. Root your tubing for your caliper here. It goes on the backside of the fender. And then you have this nice kind of two little 90 pieces here that you just kind of hook the hose in there. And here's a look, we will pull the bleed block out. All it has is these little pieces you just grab around here and pull out. It snaps off of the upper pad holder there. Slide the caliper over the rotor. And while that is in place, grab your bolts, your new bolts. Like I said, don't reuse the old ones as these have some fresh Loctite on them. And line up your bolt holes and bolt the caliper bracket in place. And these are fives as well. On the caliper bracket, there is either an up arrow or the word top. That tells you which orientation it's gonna go. But there is also the line coming out the top, which does kind of give it away as well. 
And while JT is doing that, I am removing some of the cable wrap for the rear hydraulic disc brake. And then also worth calling out, they leave the, you bolt on the caliper bracket. The caliper is attached to the bracket, but it is not tight. So I'm just gonna go ahead and snug those up a little bit, but I'm not gonna all the way tighten them as we will still have to dial in the caliper so that we don't have any rubbing. All right, now that I have those snugged up, this is a great time to call out. We made a uh, silencing your mechanical disc brakes, which uh, we don't think most electric owners are gonna need now. But in that video, uh, we have a timestamp in there for centering a caliper. Matt is a professional bike mechanic. He's gonna do a much better job explaining this than we ever could. I recommend uh, referencing that video if you want just a little bit extra insight from somebody who's been in the industry for a long time on how to center your caliper as getting your rotor centered in your actual caliper around the pads can be quite challenging by yourself. So here, you're, my head is gonna be in the way and there's no way we're gonna be able to show you this. What I'm actually going to do is I'm gonna look in between the pads here. These are these gold pieces on the back and look against the rotor. What you wanna see is you wanna see equal amount of space on each side with the rotor going right in the middle. So I'm gonna just pay attention. If you do it in nice daylight like this or you have a bright surface below you, you will be able to see that light a little bit easier. But I'm gonna go ahead and just dial that in real quick. There are a couple other ways that I've seen people do this by either engaging the brakes a little bit and holding it while you tighten the bolts, but really kind of just doing it by eye is the best way that I have been able to get my hydraulic disc brakes to not make that much sound. The tip that finally worked for me with adjusting hydraulic disc brakes is that you actually don't want them completely loose. It's much easier when they're almost fully tightened, but you can still slide them around because that allows you to make those minor adjustments, which is actually what you need with these bikes because as Matt says, we're talking about millimeters. Also a little bit of word of safety too. These rotors can be quite sharp. So make sure your fingers are not in here while the wheel is rotating. All right, and there we go. A little bit of dialing in there and you hear that? Yep, silence. That is the sound of a brake properly adjusted. Well, Ryan is just finishing up the rear there. One thing I wanted to call it that I noticed is that the mechanical disc brake, the cable for the rear actually comes down and runs through these little metal wire guides on the bottom. But we noticed on the hydraulic bike that came from electric, it's actually just rooted on the exterior. With that cable wrap, you actually don't need it because you can just get the cable close and put that wrap around the wires to keep them together. So you will not be able to run it through there. You can if you feel like bleeding your rear brakes, um, but it's gonna require extra tools and everything like that. I'd recommend just zip tying it to the outside, you're good. It's really only for these two spots right here. Everywhere else, the caliper and everything will fit through, no problem. And to pull out the cable, instead of undoing or having to cut this grommet on the rear, I'm actually just going to loosen the cable on the back here, give myself a little bit of slack. And then I'm gonna come up here to the front, line up this little bit of a channel. There we go. And then once you get that little bit of slack, you just unhook the cable now from the lever, and then you can simply Make sure you're pulling on the right cable. And then also now that we've got the cable out, there are one, two, three zip ties to undo. So you will need to zip tie the cables back there out of the way. Ryan is cutting those zip ties and finishing pulling those out. I am going to run this caliper. You kind of just want to match up the wires roughly. And then we're going to take the caliper. All right, now that Ryan has that out of the way, I've got the lever slid on up here at the front and I'm just gonna roughly mock up the wire as I go back. And you're actually gonna need to take the caliper and fish it through the lock space here behind the seat. I did notice on the Facebook page for some people that have installed this, if you have a lock installed there, you will have to remove it to be able to get this through or you'll have a little bit less room to play with. And then you simply run the cable back down here. And now we are back at the back. I'm gonna go ahead and get this cable roughly rooted with zip ties real quick. And uh, one thing that we did notice too that Electric does not have in this kit is going to be zip ties to replace those ones that you cut. Ryan's grabbing a couple of those. I'm gonna go ahead and mock this rear caliper up with our new bolts again. Again, trying not to touch the rotor to get any contaminants on it. If you do happen to touch the rotor or even the pads for whatever reason, you shouldn't need to touch the pads, but if you do end up touching those, uh, high concentrate of IPA, 99% or something like that, is a good way to eliminate some of those contaminants. All right, and then real quickly, I just threw a zip tie back on here. The zip tie to the actual brake hose here is the rear light wire. It's zip tied there and down in here in the frame. And what I wanna recommend everybody do is get a set of flush cutters. What these are gonna do is when you cut, they're not gonna leave a little sharp pointy end so that you cut your knuckles uh, on the zip ties. These are a nice pair that we just have lying around. And what they are is just a nice flat back. So when you cut the zip tie off, it leaves a nice flat back as well. 
And then the process to dial in the rear caliper is exactly the same as the front. You wanna see space on both sides of the rotor. And there you go, if you can hear that on camera, that's there's no metal scraping sound there. So that is a dialed in rear caliper. And like I said, with the front nuts, we are gonna come back around with our torque wrench and torque all of this. We'll put the torque specs for these mounting bolts and caliper bracket bolts on the screen now. And Ryan, how's that cable wrap coming up there? You no, know, pretty good, if I do say myself. Yeah, it looks it, pretty good. It's not really a big deal to have this hose here because it still holds it together pretty nicely and still looks as clean. And if you are worried about that going down anymore, you could simply throw a zip tie on that to hold it to that bracket. There is that point there for you to be able to do that. All right, so now let's get to the cockpit. The fun part, we'll wrap up these cables and uh, we already got both brakes on here. This one is flipped up. There's a little bit of like cable elasticity you're battling here, but once you get everything wrapped up and in that nice wrap, it's gonna be good. But we're not gonna wrestle with those uh, factory grips to get them back on. We're just gonna go ahead and upgrade them. And these are the grips Ryan was talking about before. These are the Ergon GP1. Uh, they're meant for the Nexus roll off like shifter, but you have a short one on one side and a long one on the other. So we're gonna go ahead and put these on. And these are nice locking and ergonomic as well. All right, we just need a throttle on this side. And again, plastic bushing. You put the throttle on first and slide that little plastic bushing on there. And we'll, what I like to do is get everything on, make sure you have everything on, and then put your grip on and get that all the way slid in so you know what area in you are messing with. Now that we've got that grip on there, we get the throttle in place, lever in place, and shifter. We did have to loosen all of this so we could slide everything in to be able to get that grip on there. And I'm going to start on the cable management in front, starting from the bottom here. Tightening down this brake lever here, I did notice it on the bottom there, there is a six to eight Newton meter torque rating. That is for the bolt on the top here to actually clamp the lever in place. And don't forget to plug in your motor cut here. And again, like I said, it does not matter right or left. Actually, let's go ahead and give you a close up of how Juliet connectors go in as there are arrows to line up, as there are some very small pins that are easy to bend. So if you look inside there, there's a keyway at the top and then on the top that lines up with those, there are those little arrows. Simply point those two arrows together and get them started by wiggling and they clip right together like that. One thing that while you're setting this up is going to be personal preference is the actual angle of your hand to the brake lever. Being that Ryan and I are both mountain bikers, I think we actually prefer them a little bit more turned down than some people. But one thing you don't want is you don't want it pointed up as you don't want to be trying to brake up here. You really kind of want them in more of a neutral or slightly down position angle as your fingers naturally will rest on the grips and go down to there. That's all gonna be comfort. It is, nice thing is, is that it's simply one bolt to adjust that angle. That is one way to increase your comfort as well while riding. We're gonna go ahead and pump the front tire up to what we like to ride at, which is somewhere around 30 PSI. So one thing that we did have happen, I don't know if you guys could see it on video here, is that when Ryan was pumping up, the tire was just a little bit off. So it became a little bit unseated over here. And that's just from it being uh, uninflated. So what we're actually gonna do is just kind of provide a little bit of pressure there. We let out a little bit of pressure for one and got the tire nicely lined up on both sides. All right. All right, Ryan, go ahead and give that another shot. And as he's pumping it up this time, I'll give it a, a little bit of a closer eye. Yeah, and what you want to see all around is there's a little bit of a line, and then there are these little lines in here that go the opposite direction. You'll be able to see a little bit of a difference. You want to see the similar sizing on both sides all the way around. There we go. So, all right, and then we're not going to forget our little plastic caps here. Checked our knuckles. Next thing that we'd recommend once you got everything tightened, we took our torque wrench and torqued all these bolts down. And now we're gonna test it. So JT has the bike on and just try the throttle. Yeah. Make sure all your hands and fingers are away from the rear motor, especially while it's up. You can also lean this over on the kickstand if you're comfortable doing that or just ride it. But make sure you're riding at a slow speed the first time you check it. We're just gonna give it a little throttle. Get the rear wheel moving. You notice the wheel moves. That means that the motor cutoffs are not always engaged. And then with while holding the throttle, I'm gonna, there we go. And I can feel the, um, just pulling the lever a little bit, listening for the motor to cut to make sure that's operating the way it should. And that's, I'm gonna test each lever independently. And I'm gonna make sure the rear brake stops. There we go. 
just like a hydraulic brake should. What you'll want to do is take this for a ride and what they call bedding in your brakes. Get up to speed, 15, 20 miles an hour, and don't slam on the brakes, but get them, give them a nice firm pull and that will help bed in the brakes and help them function properly for future rides. Yeah. All right, what time do we have? It is 11.53. We had to stop a little bit for some uh, people that stopped by. So I say we give ourselves, maybe take off about five of those minutes, but then we have to immediately apply that five minute penalty back because we get to use a stand. So. And we had two people. That's true. Yeah, and I, but again, I think Ryan and I are in agreement. Two tedious parts. A, wrapping the cables is gonna be a little difficult. And then second thing is gonna be getting those grips off. Yeah. So, but outside of that, installing hydraulic disc brakes is not a difficult task. Um, it does hold a little bit of connotation because it is the brakes, like so it slows you down. Um, as long as you go slow, tedious, follow this video. Electric also has a guide on their website that you can follow that if we didn't provide the information you needed, that's a good place for you to check as well. And if you're curious the difference between mechanical and hydraulic disc brakes, we did an entire video calling out the differences with the upgraded 3.0. We did a brake test with cones. Check out that video if you're interested. If you're looking to make a purchase with Electric, again, links down in the description. If you use those links, help support the channel, makes videos like this one possible. Thank you so much for your support and see you guys in the next one.